Okay, everybody, uh, let me say good afternoon. My name is Jerry Shockey. I am the Director of Youth and Education here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and we're excited to bring to you today a program called Art in the Hall of Fame Experience. And so we've got uh, uh, lots of stuff we want to do here today as far as uh, what we're going to talk about, um, uh, about art in the museum. Uh, we're not going to be coming here live with me, but we're gonna go live into our museum as well with our education team. We've got Jake and Nathan and, and Amanda there in the, in the, uh, in the exhibit areas. Uh, gonna be going back and forth between us to talk about art and the Hall of Fame experience. So just so you guys know, we're just bringing this out to you guys. Uh, they're shortened versions of what we offer on a regular basis to schools all across the country. Whether you're coming here to the Pro Football Hall of Fame uh, on a field trip or whether you're connecting into us from uh, schools all across the country, and all over the world. Uh, this is one of the examples of the programs that we've been doing over the past few months now that we've been bringing this on Friday. So, so we're excited to do that here. Uh, one of the things we always like to do before we get started, and let me go ahead and uh, I'm gonna share my screen here so you guys can see that, is uh, let's go ahead and share. What you'll see is a map here uh, uh, of the Pro Football of Fame where we're at, so depending on where you are connecting in from, uh, you'll see where we at here in Canton, Ohio, Northeast Ohio. And so what I will do is zoom in just to give you guys kind of a, a view of our building. And you can see that there. And then what you see next to us is Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium. This is where the annual Hall of Fame game is played. Uh, this is where our enshrinement ceremony is held. This is where our concert for legends is. Let me just give you a kind of a sneak peek into the, into the stadium. And then we can go on down here and just show you guys uh, our main entrance at the Hall of Fame. And so let me come back to stop share here with you guys. And so uh, today, what we're going to talk to you guys today, again, is about uh, art and the Hall of Fame experience. And so we're going to jump in and out of that. But again, uh, one of the things we're going to do is, is convey who we are and what it is that we do here at the Pro Football of Fame. And again, this will be a shortened version of what we typically do, uh, but nonetheless, give you kind of an idea of the type of programs we offer uh, here at the Pro Football of Fame. And so we'll skip over the more than the game video that talks about why football is more than a game. But what I will focus in on is this right here, is our mission here at the Hall of Fame is to honor the heroes of the game, preserve its history, promote its values, and to celebrate excellence everywhere. Our vision, it's not just the past, it's the future, it's not just about Canton, it's the world. It's not just a great museum for football. It's a message of excellence everywhere. Our values, commitment, integrity, courage, respect, and excellence is what we stand for here at the Pro Football Fame. But let's go ahead and get started into the program here. We're gonna be diving in and out of this Prezi, coming to me, going live in the museum. So we got all kinds of exciting things we're gonna do here for the next probably 25, 30 or so minutes that we're gonna talk about here today. But when we look at art, in the Hall of Fame, there's all kinds of different expressions of art here, from exhibit design to lighting to themes to, uh, I mean, all kinds of different things. But what this program focuses on are some specific examples of art and how it's expressed through our museum. Obviously, one of the most iconic uh, things that we talk about are some of the sculptures here. And there are really two types of popular sculptures, relief and freestanding, and both can either be built up uh, or carved. And some examples of these are obviously of those of the bronze bust. And you see the bronze bust here of uh, gold jacket Brett Favre, along with the bronze bust of that of the marble sculpture of the bust of Aristotle. But what we want to do is right now, speaking of bronze bust, we're going to go live into our Hall of Fame gallery. We have Nathan Martin going to be talking a little bit about the bronze bust in the process. Yeah, thanks, Jerry, for sending it over here. And uh, I know you mentioned Brett Favre's bronze bust, and I'm standing right next to it, and I'm surrounded by these bronze busts here in our Hall of Fame gallery. But before we talk a little bit more about the art, we want to tell you guys just how special it is for somebody to have one of these bronze busts. In the history of pro football, there have been over 300 million people that have played the game at all levels. Only 5 million have been lucky enough or talented enough to play the game in college. And of that 5 million, only about 30,000 have played coached or administered the game of pro or the game of football at the professional level and of that th or 30,000 we have 326 bronze busts and if you look over here 
we actually have our um, display set up to add our class of 2020 that'll take our number up to 346. But we're talking about art, we're talking about sculptures. How are these made? Our uh, primary partner would be a man by the name of Mr. Blair Buswell, and this here is in our museum, and it just documents the step-by-step -step process that he uses to make these bronze busts. They start the week of the Super Bowl, getting the measurements, starting to get the molding and the clay that they need to turn these into uh, the incredible bronze busts that they are. And I know that you've got a video that you're going to show our uh, Facebook audience, Jerry, that features and talks about how Mr. Buswell created this bronze bust right here, uh, Hall of Famer Randy Moss. So, Jerry, back to you. Thank you, Nathan. That's perfect. And yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to dive right back into this Prezi, and we're going to look at how that bronze bust of Randy Moss came about. Randy Moss, we know one of the greatest wide receivers, where his name has become, uh, you know, a, a verb, if you will, that you got mossed. Uh, so let's look at that bronze bust and how that was made. New today is to decide on an expression and the hairdo. <sighs> Mr. Buswell, <laughs> I knew you was gonna ask me. What do you think about this? Oh, baby. <laughs> Is it doable? No one would know who you are. Oh, man. <laughs> Mr. Buswell, I don't think this is doable. This is a fraud. Okay, okay, let's put it well, on. All right, put it on. Up on there the you go, Mr. Okay, Buswell. All right, now we got to start. I like this smile. Okay. I like this smile the with mouth. The, you, the mouth. With more intense on the look. Yeah. Okay. But the hair, if we went cornrows, could you bun it up? This is a starting point. Okay. It's not you yet. This is just... That is me! That's me! <laughs> <laughs> the end of the day, we'll have this thing come to life. Oh, man. That's the core road. Okay, Randy, look at me again. From where we started taking that bag off to where we are today. Yeah. You know, on your wedding date when you ain't supposed to see your no, wife. Don't compare it. Let me, see, let me see what my girl look like, Mr. Buswell. I ain't ready to go. Let me see my girl right now. Where you at, baby? You ready to go on a date? You ready to go on a... <laughs> okay, Randy Moss! Now, see, if all these cameras wouldn't have been in here, Mr. Buswell, you know how to told everybody, me and you did this. <laughs> <laughs> not quite, Randy. But there's one more bust stop between the studio and the hall. The foundry. Where for nearly two months, the bust is turned into bronze. I think we did a good job this year. It's always exciting every year at the induction to be able to see their reaction when they pull it off and look at it. And I'll be watching to see what the Randy's expression is. Presenting Randy Moss for enshrinement into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. It's been a, a great honor for me to be working for 35 years with the Football Hall of Fame. Go buses here, go jackets on. We are in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. God bless and have a good night. Being able to sculpt the greatest football players to ever play the game. I've been pinching myself for a long time. Okay, all right. So we're going to go on to look at uh, some other forms of uh, art in our museum. Obviously, the statues, obviously one of the first things you're greeted by and one of the legend here at the Pro Football Fame, Jim Thorpe. Uh, who played, uh, you know, two pro sports, all kinds of things that uh, Jim Thorpe did. But we compare that statue, that bronze casting, with that of the uh, Greek bronze casting of the discus thrower from 485 BC. Some of the other things we look at are actually the relief sculptures. And we have a great example of a relief sculpture here at the Pro Football of Fame. 
right at our front steps. And so I know we have Jake and Nathan outside now. They're moving around. They're scurrying about, getting this done. Jake, I see you there. Why don't you talk a little bit about what you what you stand in front of? Yes, Jerry, thank you. As, you. as Jerry said, yes, we are outside of our, our Hall of Fame Museum at the old entrance to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And what we want to focus on today is that iconic art piece up there, that relief sculpture like Jerry talked about. That relief sculpture is kind of one of the most iconic symbols here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And as Nathan gets in and kind of gets a closer look at that, we'll tell you a little bit about how this came about. This was designed and created by a lady named Dale Drewis. She was a wife of NFL legend Chuck Drews, who played for the Chicago Bears and the Green Bay Packers in the 1940s and the 1950s. And as you can see, this piece of art depicts three different football players, a ball carrier who is following his blocker, who is blocking the defender or the tackler in order to get him to the end zone. And this Mrs. Drewis used her husband Chuck and her sons Chuck and Kyle as the inspiration behind this piece. And as you can see, as in, you can imagine, this did not just get up there. It took some time. Uh, to go through and actually create this art piece. And I have some photos here with me today. We're gonna show you kind of the, the lead up to how this got up to. So here's the image you can see Mrs. Drewis sculpting what is the runner or the, the running back there of that piece. Then we go on to see some of the, the hardworking members of our camp community helping load that uh, up a ladder up onto the, the facade of our, our building here. And lastly, we have an image during the actual construction itself of the pieces being put on and, and mounted to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So it's not just the museum itself, statues, busts, they're all great, but we actually have a really cool form of artwork on the outside of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So Jerry, we're gonna throw it back to you. All right, thank you, Jake. And uh, we're gonna jump right back into this Prezi here. And as you just saw the comparison of, uh, of that, uh, what he just showed you with uh, uh, the God of Anubis, uh, Reign of Seti the first back from 1290 to 1279, uh, BC that you see right there. Um, and then with students, what we do is look at is what are some similarities, differences between the examples shown uh, of, of the bust, uh, the statue, and the, the, the relief sculptures uh, that you saw, saw there. Uh, and obviously, one of the ways that we talk about, uh, uh, you know, expressions of art is just buildings it's themselves, the architecture. And, and obviously, we have a pretty unique shaped building here at the Pro Football of Fame. Uh, called a rotunda. And here's some examples of those. Uh, not only us, the Pro Football of Fame here in Canton, Ohio, we have the Pantheon, another dome in Rome, Italy. We have the U.S. Capitol building in Washington, D.C. And so we can look at the insides of those. But again, what we will do is we are going to go back to Jake and Nathan. So Jake is on standby with the dome in the background. He's going to take you inside the building. Uh, Jake, take it away, buddy. Thanks, Jerry. Again, I'm on the other side of the Pro Football Hall of Fame now, our main entrance into our great Hall of Fame museum. And as you can see behind me, that iconic dome that Jerry just talked about, it's kind of the, the first visual piece you see when you drive by the Hall of Fame. We've got a bunch of cars driving right now on 77. They see that dome when they drive by, that symbol of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. A lot of people say, you know, it may look like an orange juicer, and we get that, but we here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame think that definitely looks like a football. I don't know about you guys watching on Facebook Live, but that's me looks like a football. So that's going to be the dome. So if you see the outside, we're actually going to take you now inside our main entrance to the inside of that dome. We're going to talk to you a little bit about some of the things you'll see when you walk in here to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, as well as kind of the history of where we got our today. So we're going to come in our front doors here. And as you can see, you're greeted with our mission statement, as Jerry talked about, honor the heroes of the game, preserve its history, promote its values, and to celebrate excellence everywhere. So as you come, you meet our wonderful staff up front here. Your first thing you're going to get to see it's the Hunt Casterline card collection. This is a, one of the most rarest and expensive card collections in the entire world. And we have that on display here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, featuring a rookie card of every Hall of Famer we have enshrined here in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. We're going to make our way up the time tunnel here, and we're going to show you some other things we have on display. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how we got to where we are today. Uh, on August 11th, 1963, the groundbreaking of the Pro Football Hall of Fame began. And on September 7th, 1963, we had our grand opening and opened our doors to football fans across the entire world. You know, throughout the history of everything, we've almost tripled our space. We went from just about 30,000 square foot of coverage here in the, in the museum space to over 80,000. Uh, most recently, uh, in 2010, we had what was called the Future 50 Project which was a $27 million expansion project. So we can include some of the greatest artifacts with the game has ever seen 
here in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And as we make our way into here to the first floor of the first century of pro football, our rotunda, we're going to get you a look not only at the Jim Thorpe statue that Jerry mentioned before, but we're actually going to show you the inside of what that dome looks like. So hopefully you'll be able to kind of guess which one and uh, how they paired up. We're going to give you a shot of what the inside of that iconic dome looks like. So you can see that there's so many different art forms here at the Hall of Fame. You saw some photography, some football cards. That all is art our Jim Thorpe statue, and then we finish up with the look of the inside of our dome. So Jerry, back to you. All right, thank you, Jake. And uh, we are gonna go back to uh, our Prezi here. And let's see if you guys can guess just uh, as we say it. Uh, oops, sorry, let me go ahead and uh, share screen here again and make sure we get the right one. There we go. All right, and so what you'll see is on the inside here, you can see, uh, if you can guess what you see or what you see there, uh, and yeah, you probably got it right. The first one's in Rome, Italy. The second one's the U.S. Capitol building. And the third one is actually uh, the inside of our rotunda here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And again, as Jake alluded to, uh, when we talk about photography, we talk about paintings and drawings. Uh, before photography, the only way to capture an image of an individual was, a, was a, really a, a painted portrait. Uh, and, and so uh, these portraits would create a lasting image of the individual. So drawings were used to convey other ideas using cartoons, portraits, illustrations and many other forms. And so here's an example of what we do with students is we have four paintings here. All of them, we can kind of ask them which two match up with each other. Uh, and obviously kids will naturally say, well, Pete Rozelle and Dwight D. Eisenhower. What is the artist? And these are four different artists here uh, that did these. And those two, what was the artist's idea of what they were trying to convey? And obviously students will say someone of importance, someone that might uh, be wealthy, someone that might be in, and some students know that obviously Dwight D. Eisenhower was a president, former president. Some people might even know, we've had some kids every now and again to know that Pete Rozelle was essentially a president, obviously the president or the commissioner of the National Football League. And the same thing with the French General Napoleon and Chuck Ironman Benerick, who was portrayed as because he was being the last 60 minute man in the NFL. And so these expressions of art help convey, uh, uh, you know, the ideas that these artists had behind them of what they're trying to convey. Uh, with these individuals. Uh, and then we see photography. And this is an art form, was not really considered real art form until actually the turn of the, the 20th century. Uh, and so we have here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, we love photography. We have millions and millions of photos in our collection. Uh, and we also have a photo contest every year uh, where we uh, look at action and still photography. And so Jake is back in our museum to talk a little bit about our action still photography and our, our, our photo contest. Yes, I am, Jerry, thanks. We're back inside in the cool air conditioning here uh, in Canton, Ohio. As you can see, I do wanna talk about our photo contest. The photo contest is an annual contest. It's an opportunity for photographers to submit their photos from the previous NFL season uh, to be considered for two different categories, action shots and feature shots. Uh, if you turned in earlier this year, we actually had Mr. Ben Leibenberg on to talk about what each of those categories mean and how those winners are chosen. And speaking of winners, on display here in Canton, Ohio, we have the winners from the 51st Annual Photo Contest. We look at our first one here for the, the action prize. We have George Kittle, the, the 49ers tight end, got his eye on the ball to get uh, try and receive that pass. And if we move over here to our first place from the feature, this guy's going to look pretty familiar to a lot of our NFL fans, and that is Lamar Jackson the MVP of the season last year. So these are from the 51st annual contest. And I want to show you, I've got some images with me. I want to show you the images from the 52nd, the one that just took place this year and the images that won for that. So for our action party, we have what was called Air Allen. As you can see, Keenan Allen, wide receiver of the Chargers, diving into the end zone over the Broncos defender. You've got the, the dirt flying up, the, the pylons bent just right. And this nice little, creates a little frame for our official friend there in the back. And if we flip over to our feature category, if this doesn't screen football, I don't know what does. This is the picture titled Mud Mug. And as you can see, offensive lineman in the dirt, the grime of the NFL season. Uh, so as you can see, we have, a, like we said before, a bunch of sculptures and paintings and everything, but photography, while it may just be, you know, some people say it's just point and clicking, it is an art form. And as you can see from these pictures behind me, and the pictures from our 52nd annual contest that it is truly an art form. So Jerry, back to you. All right, thank you, Jake and Nathan. Appreciate you guys uh, scurrying around the museum to bring these live shots from our museum uh, to our Facebook Live audience here today. And so again, we are just like before, gonna jump back into this Prezi and keep diving further into art 
in the Hall of Fame experience. Uh, one of the other expressions of art that people don't realize, a lot of people don't realize, especially young people, is logos. Uh, logos are an expression of art, what's trying to be conveyed about the company or the product that they're trying to sell. And here are some of our friends and our partners here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, the Cleveland Browns, the NFL, play football, built Ford Tough, one of our partners. And one of the reasons why our youth and educational programs are free, the video conferencing programs and another, a number of other initiatives are free, is courtesy of our partners at Extreme Networks. And so uh, we see logos as an expression of art. But here are the two, next to the bronze bust, here are probably the two most iconic uh, pieces here because it's an expression of, a, a, of, of what can be accomplished when you are united as a team. And, and so we look at those here today and we're gonna look at both of those here today, uh, the Super Bowl rings as well as the Super Bowl trophy. And before we go into this video that I have here for you, I know we have Nathan Martin from our youth education team in front of a special uh, display that we have there for the Super Bowl ring. So Nathan, what do you got for us? Yeah, thanks Jerry for sending it over. And like you said, I'm here at our Super Bowl ring display. We actually have 53 of the 54 Super Bowl rings, starting with Super Bowl one and the Green Bay Packers going all the way up to Tom Brady's latest championship, the Patriots. We're still waiting on Patrick Mahomes, Super Bowl 54 ring. Um, some cool facts about the Super Bowl rings. Actually, the NFL provides up to $5,000 for 150 rings for the teams uh, to give players, staff, personnel. That way, the whole organization, the whole franchise is rewarded for such a great accomplishment. Um, most teams spend more money than that. They, they need more rings than 150, but the NFL does provide a little bit of money to help make these rings. And actually, if you look at Super Bowl uh, 47, the Baltimore Ravens used to have the record for the most diamonds. You can see there, there's 243 diamonds, but most recently in Super Bowl 53, the New England Patriots blew that out of the water and put 422 diamonds in that ring. Uh, so we can only imagine what Kansas City has planned after 50 years since their last Super Bowl championship uh, with this most latest ring. So, Jerry, back to you. All right. Thank you, Nathan. And uh, what we're going to do is just show you guys. I mean, how cool is that? It's an expression of art, these Super Bowl rings. And let's show you exactly how that art piece is made as the Super Bowl ring.
We saw the Super Bowl ring. And now, obviously, one of the other iconic pieces, uh, because there's only one made each year, uh, where there might be 150-plus rings that an NFL team would have and make, uh, and sometimes even beyond that, depending on the NFL team. Uh, I know some teams, like the Pittsburgh Steelers, I think they bought one for every one of their staff members, kind of a scaled-back version uh, when the Steelers won their uh, fifth and sixth one. But uh, obviously one of the uh, iconic pieces, because it's shown on national TV after that game concludes, that that trophy is hoisted, and you saw Patrick Mahomes, the Kansas City Chiefs, hoist that this year. And so let's look at how that piece of art is made. about 22 inches high and weighs close to seven pounds and it takes the craftspeople here at Tiffany approximately four months to build the trophy. Uh, it goes through several different stations of the uh, shop here. It starts off in the spinning area where flat pieces of silver are placed on a lathe and spun and formed to create the two halves of the football. The football is actually a regulation size NFL ball. Uh, the two halves of the ball are then brought together with a seamless soldering. The ball then move into the chasing area where an individual will, with a hammer and chisel, uh, create the seams of the ball. While that's taking place, uh, a silversmith is creating the laces and he's forming little pieces of silver and, and turning those into the laces. Those are then soldered onto the ball as well. The base of the trophy is formed from three sheets of flat sterling silver that are rolled. And while that's happening, the shield is being made from yet another piece of silver uh, at another silversmith's bench. The shield will be applied to the base and then it'll move into our engraving department where an engraver will carve in the uh, Vince Lombardi trophy name as well as the Super Bowl date. I can't imagine a more important moment in the life of a professional athlete than being on the field in celebration of their championship. So uh, it's a real privilege for us to make this trophy, uh, arguably one of the most iconic trophies in sports. And we will all watch in anticipation of the conclusion of the game so that we can see this trophy make its way to the 50 yard line. Okay. All right. Well, we are actually joined again by our youth education team. I know Nathan is on standby by our very own Super Bowl trophy on display. Yeah, thanks, Sherry, for sending it back here. Uh, it's Nathan once again. And like you said, I'm standing next to the Vince Lombardi trophy. And this is actually a replica. It's, it's just like what the players get, the teams get at the end of the season. Um, but this is actually a replica that we have from Tiffany's. But believe it or not, after the four-month process that Tiffany uses to, to construct and curate this uh, great piece of artwork, the Pro Football Hall of Fame will house the trophy. So we're still waiting to receive Super Bowl 55, but we house the trophy that's hoisted at the end of the season for the remaining five or six months in, throughout the NFL season. So here soon we should expect to receive Super Bowl 55, the trophy that will be hoisted at the end of the year in Tampa Bay. Um, this is a replica, but it's so recognizable. Um, one of the most iconic symbols in all of sports uh, that we're so proud to have here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But just to kind of wrap things up, I wanted to thank everybody for tuning in today. Uh, on behalf of myself, Jake, Amanda, our whole team, I know Jerry will say goodbye too as well, but we really appreciate you guys watching and hopefully learning um, how art and football can intersect and uh, coexist together. So thank you guys. All right, Nathan, Jake, Amanda, thank you very much for scurrying around the, 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 the museum to bring these live shots to our uh, Facebook Live audience. And just to our Facebook Live audience, uh, thank you for tuning in here today. 
uh, for these. And again, make sure if you're watching, you know, tell your tell your uh, uh, your teachers, uh, have your kids, you know, connect in whatever way possible, whether it's visit here at the Pro Football of Fame for one of our youth educational programs, or whether it's connecting in over video, uh, as we do with schools all over the country and all over the world. Uh, and again, programs like ours, our video conferencing programs are free courtesy of partners like Extreme Networks. And so uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email us at education at profootballhof.com. Again, that's education at profootballhof.com. Well, this concludes our program. We want to say thank you to each and every one of you that tuned in here today. Uh, take care and God bless you.